It's my pleasure today to announce that after nearly one year of study and analysis, last week the Robert Morris College trustees have approved the intercollegiate football program proposed by the administration, beginning in 1994-95 academic year. He was an All-American at Pitt. He played eight years with the Redskins and spent 35 years in professional football as either a player, a coach, or a scout. And he spent seven years with the New York Jets and most recently with the Steelers as an offensive coordinator. So at this time, I'd like to, to introduce our first football coach at Robert Morris, Coach Joe Walton. My whole career as a coach, uh, I have loved challenge. And I think this is a tremendous challenge. Uh, I think everybody here at uh, Robert Morris is committed uh, to uh, uh, building this program. Uh, we will have some uh, very fine student athletes, I'm sure, that want to continue playing football. And those are the young people that will be looking to recruit and to uh, uh, be a part of our program. Into the 1994 inaugural football season for Robert Morris College, expectations were not high. But Joe Walton and his squad were out to prove the public wrong, and prove them wrong is what they did. On November 12, 1994, the Robert Morris Football Colonials completed their exciting first year journey with a 37 27 come from behind victory over Mercyhurst. The Colonials finished the season with an amazing 7 1 1 record and barely missed making an appearance in the Eastern College Athletic Conference Bowl game. Just over a year after Joe Walton was named as head football coach, he and his staff put together a squad of mostly freshmen for their first game against Waynesburg on September 3rd, 1994. The Colonial offense was anchored by the play of 6'1", 180-pound freshman quarterback Jake Newman from Powell, Ohio. In the Colonial's first ever game against Waynesburg, Newman was spectacular, completing 13 of 21 for 216 yards and three touchdowns. It was evident early that Newman's favorite target was 6'4", 205-pound junior transfer wide receiver Rob Frazier, one of three transfers from Kemper Military Academy on the team. Against Waynesburg, Newman hit Frazier four times for 59 yards, including two touchdowns as the Colonials held off the sting of the Yellow Jackets in an exciting 24-19 victory. The following week against Monmouth, in RMC's first ever home game, Newman was even more amazing, completing 22 of 29 for 298 yards and three touchdowns. Frazier was on the receiving end of seven of those Newman completions, including two more touchdowns to give him four after only two games. The game also saw the emergence of six foot, 215 pound fullback Tim Hall, also a junior transfer from Kemper. Hall caught seven passes out of the backfield and showed he could definitely run after catching the ball, gaining 114 yards receiving, including a 70 yard touchdown catch. But Hall was just giving the RMC crowd a small preview of things to come as the Colonials grounded the Monmouth Hawks by a score of 26 to 19. After going on the road and hanging on to a 24 to 17 win at Central Connecticut State, RMC returned home for two important home games that would define the Robert Morris Colonial football team and its season. The Gannon Golden Knights came to Moon Stadium undefeated and looking to hand the Colonials their first loss. But Tim Hall would not allow that to happen gaining an incredible 208 yards on 15 carries with two touchdowns. Hall single-handedly picked apart the Gannon defense. Hall's 95-yard touchdown run in the third quarter was seen on highlight reels across the country as the Colonials were beginning to make believers out of everybody. While Newman only completed five passes in the game, it didn't matter as eight different guys carried the ball for the Colonials for a total of 45 times, 246 yards, and three touchdowns. Colonials also showed they could play defense. Coach Dan Radakovich and assistants Dave Harper and Jim Sully unleashed the hard-hitting Colonial defense, which had seven sacks, caused four fumbles, had an interception, and held the Golden Knights to one of ten on third-down conversions. Leading the way for the defense were Dante Payne and Nate List. Payne, a 5'10", 172-pound cornerback, 
from Cincinnati, Ohio, had 15 tackles and recovered a fumble. And List, a 6'3", 195-pound freshman linebacker from Industry PA, a converted quarterback, added 13 tackles as the Colonial defense lanced the Gannon Golden Knights 28 to nothing. In what could become a long bit of rivalry in this city, the Duquesne Dukes arrived at Moon Stadium at 4-0 and poised to be the first to knock off the Robert Morris Colonials. But the only thing they could really say at the end was that they kept Tim Hall out of the end zone. Still, Hall continued his string of 100-yard gains, grinding out 117 yards on the ground. But the Colonials turned to the passing game for their victory over the Dukes. Jake Newman was simply dazzling as he went 16 for 31 for 228 yards and four touchdowns, including three to his bread and butter, Rob Frazier. Newman also completed seven passes to his tight end, Greg Bussey and Andrew Dorsey, who both played consistently well throughout the season. Bussey, a 6'4", 225-pound freshman from Reston, Virginia, had five catches for 75 yards. Dorsey, a 6'4", 240-pound sophomore from Stowe Rocks High School, added two catches, including a 12-yard touchdown catch in the fourth quarter. The Colonials' defense came up big again as Nate List led the way with 12 tackles and a fumble recovery. The third of the Kemper transfers, 6-foot, 215-pound strong safety, Piante Crew added 10 tackles. Crew would go on to be the Colonials' defensive leader in most categories when the season was all said and done. 6-foot-1, 190-pound freshman linebacker Fred Manilak from Steubenville, Ohio, added four tackles to the Colonial cause and three quarterback sacks as Robert Morris beat the Dukes 28-6. Undefeated seasons in football are extremely hard because of injuries, bad bounces, and just plain bad luck. The Colonial team finally met fate when they traveled to Staten Island, New York, as they lost 38-21 to the Wagner Seahawks. Despite an incredible performance again by Tim Hall, as he gained 157 yards on the ground and 130 in the air, scoring all of RMC's three touchdowns and even running in a two-point conversion. The following week, the Colonials came from behind to tie St. Francis of PA 14-all. Rumors about the Colonials possibly gaining a bowl bid dependent on the outcome of their two final games began to abound, and Robert Morris would end its home season in triumphant form. Tim Hall was in immaculate form that day, gaining an incredible 278 yards on 22 carries and four touchdowns, becoming RMC's first ever 1,000-yard rusher. RMC dominated the Bethany Bisons by the score of 38-14. to Then Robert Morris traveled on to Mercyhurst, to overcome a 14 to nothing first quarter deficit to simply manhandle the Lakers 37 to 27 to end the season at 7-1-1. One and, one. and while bowl officials chose the Wagner Seahawks over the Colonials for the ECAC Bowl, RMC gained an incredible amount of confidence and respect for a bright future and ending the long journey that was the first of many for the RMC squad. I've been in this game for 30 some years, 36, 37 years. I couldn't be more proud of a bunch of kids in my home.